Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Okami HD, episode 46, season 4, episode 1. It's almost three years it's taken to make this fucking Let's Play and... Well, I guess that's mostly my fault. Really, everything's been kind of leading up to this season actually. Because now that the game is opened up, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we need to do. But, there's gonna be a different format for this because a lot of the stuff that we need to do in order to get the Platinum takes a lot of time. This particular chunk of footage right here is already 40 minutes. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start everyone's favorite minigame, fishing. And to do so, we'll hop into this spring here and use Whirlpool to take us directly to our first fishing stop. Okay, technically our second, but we are going to head to the aristocratic quarter in Seon City. Wow, haven't been here in a while. Huh. Well, we'll go ahead and bloom this tree here. And our first uh, first stop is going to be Benkei over here. You know, Benkei from the great bridge that brought us into the city. Here's where he ended up, and here's where he's been. He's gonna be our introduction to fishing, and well, this is where the time sink comes in. Here we go. Fishing works just as it had before in Agata Forest. Draw a line to whatever unlucky fish you want to catch, hold the opposite direction that the fish is going in order to draw it closer, then when the button prop appears, press it to lure the fish out, and then power slash so that Ben K can reel it in. Don't let the fish get away, don't overexert yourself. Not quite Sega bass fishing levels of depth, but not quite big the catch sheer ineptitude and frustration levels either. What's cool is that you keep every fish you catch all the time, because Ben K only fishes for the sport of it rather than the money. Because that's what we're all about. Fishermen make millions, you kidding me? Anyway, the primary goal of this episode is to fill up our fish tome and get the trophy that's associated with it. Yeah, that's what we're doing mostly in this season. Cleanup work. Getting extra trophies. This is one of the three permanent fishing spots in the game. Agata Forest's fishing spot disappears after some time, but all the fish that are catchable in Agata can be caught in Seon. And in fact, there's more fish in Seon than there are in Agata. So that's nice, at least. Each location has fish that are specific only to that location, but there are also fish that exist in more than one location. Well, the fish you can catch at Seon are river crab, Crawfish, black bass, killifish, smelt, goby, sweetfish, trout, catfish, loach, freshwater eel, mm, robalo, koi, salmon, sturgeon, giant catfish, mountain trout, and the cutlish fish, the living sword, which we already got in the story. The giant salmon and the whopper were available only at Agata Forest, but again, we caught those two already in the story. You can't miss those. Well, as they say in shitty Godzilla movies, that's a lot of marine organisms. Really, the only bit of advice that I can give for any of the fishing sections is just fish, fish, fish. The fish you catch are random, and it helps to keep a list of the fish you still need to catch. Trust me, it's what I did. And while you're at the mercy of the RNG, there are a few things that you can do to help yourself out. One, there are three sizes of fish, so if you're looking for that medium fish, draw a line to that one instead of the small fries. Two, each fish acts just slightly different in their own subtle way. Whatever fish you catch may be random, but their personalities certainly are not. One may feel a bit looser than another one, and one may feel a bit slower, and one just won't get in the fucking GET OVER HERE! 3. Some fish only appear during certain times of day. Luckily, you have a direct shot of the sky, so you can use sunrise or moonrise, whatever, to change what day you need to be at. The transition from day to night isn't shown, so you need to pay attention that you're not accidentally catching night fish when you need to be catching day fish. Keeping that list of fish you need to catch will prove to be helpful once you start getting to the end, because only then will you know that you've caught every fish you need to catch without having to check your fish tome every chance you get. Keep at it long enough and you'll eventually catch them all. Fishing's all about patience, isn't it? Alright, now that we've got all the fish we need from Seon, let's head to our next location. One quick look at our fish tome reveals that we have all the fish that we can catch from Seon, but looking ahead, there's still plenty of blank spaces left. And that's what we're going to be taking care of here next. So now, we're going to head back into the Mermaid Spring, because there is no warp safe point from here. We're going to head to our next area. Alright, the next place we're heading is going to be North Ryoshima Coast. Oh, let's see. North Ryo... Alright, here we go. North Ryoshima Coast. Off we go.
There's uh, one side quest, one small side quest that we need to take care of before we actually get to the fishing aspect of this part. So we'll just go ahead and jump over Orca here and head to the Northwestern Islands, which will take quite some time. Now that we've reached the uh, northern islands here, away from the mainland, we can get to finding that side quest, because remembering where exactly it is, <laughs> I'm not... <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure. So we'll go ahead and uh, head on over here, because there's still some stuff we can still try and find, even if we don't find the side quest, and finding this dock is a good sign, because, hey, here is our fisherman right here. Go ahead and give this guy a talking to. After it turns from night to day. So I think because we gave him the Marlin Rod earlier in the story, I really don't remember, uh, we are now able to do some fishing and do this side quest. The thing is, though, this isn't exactly like doing the fishing we didn't say on. This is still the side quest. So we've got to get ourselves two smaller fish before we get that big marlin that he's after. Then after that, he'll be hanging here and we can get the shopping. So we can have the shopping with the fishing taken care of. The first fish we can cross off our list is, uh, Striped Snapper. Hmm. Kind of an unusual fish to get on our first go. The second fish we're gonna grab. Here in a second. Ah! It's a starfish. It's harder to hit than it looks. Alright, we got a snapper and a starfish to start out with. Now for the big one. Yes, this soon. We've already fished for like an entire half an hour earlier. We know how this works now. I think this was intent. This little scene was intended to be done when you're in the North Ryushima coast for the first time. But seeing as how we're doing cleanup, what better time to do it than now? And one more, and we get one of the bigger fish in the game the marlin. Well, I like to call it a sword fist, but I guess Marlin works well, too. Yeah, it works out. Alright. I'm pretty sure we still keep that Marlin. I'm, I, I don't know, I don't remember, but I think we still keep the Marlin, even though he has it and he's gonna use it to eat. So yeah, good for him and all, but uh, still doesn't solve our main quest of getting all the fish. So I'm wondering where the hell did he go? I say he was going to run it over to somebody, but I don't see anybody here, though. He went back here, so I mean, what? Well, hang on. Still one more place we need to go real quick, and that is, indeed, finding out where the Marlin went, because there's a special thing, there's a little special bonus for this side quest, I suppose. Not really a bonus, because we need to pick it up, regardless, but uh, let's head back to the restaurant back here, I guess uh, that's what we're going to call it. I don't think we've ever been inside this building, and if we have, not for long, because it's not really all that important of a building, story-wise. It's only just for side quests, really. So, going to the back, we see, well, that's where the Marlin is. Cool. Talk to Umi here. The uh, cat chef type thing? See, he's still talking about the water dragon like he's still around there, but dude, I hate to break it to you, the water dragon is dead. 
He died a while ago, you know. It's so, alright. Marlin's still fresh, even though like could have caught the Marlin in the story, and only now we could be cutting him up, but still. He's gonna use his knives, his special technique to chop up this Marlin and make him edible for everybody. So here we go. We're given a special new brush stroke. Three strokes. Then we're given a brand new power. It's not really a new brush stroke ability, but more like an enhancement of an existing brush stroke. Ah, lovely. It actually looks really, really good. I don't know how you got uh, five Marlin heads out of that one Marlin head, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask. Maybe that's just the magic of the power of the gods and the power of a truly exquisite chef. And now the god of wind, Kazegami, shows up and says, "Oh, hey, you got yourself a new power." We'll be doing this later on in another episode, but this is just a happy coincidence. We happen to get uh, a new power. I think this is Cyclone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Cyclone. Warwind, sorry. Warwind, Cyclone. I'm probably gonna be calling them both. But yes, it's very important we get these new brushstroke abilities, because with each brushstroke ability comes a new technique scroll or a traveler's guide. And of course, that leads to a trophy. That's up to the platinum. And it gets your praise, too, and that's always important. Inside that chest is the Gale Storm tech. I'm talking about more of the techniques we have. That counts as a uh, traveler's guide, and so that's one more for the collection. All right, time to go back to the islands. We headed back to the dock where the fisherman is supposed to be. For some reason, he isn't. Odd. I think I had to maybe wait a day, or perhaps, but let's do one quick thing while we're waiting for him to show up. As I fail a trick. There's a hard dig spot somewhere around here, I think. Maybe not this island, but maybe that one over there. Yeah, that's, that's the one over there. We'll be coming back here next episode, so uh, we're not going to be going too far. But yeah, I believe it is this island right here that we're going to be heading to right now. Yeah, here we go. There's a hard dig spot right here. And uh, I know this is all about fishing, but this is just preparation for uh, the next episode. Because down here we have... <laughs> another spider queen. This is the third time we're facing this uh, this enemy. I mean, not really a whole lot has changed. I mean, the strategy is still basically the same. Except instead of two to hook him on, or three, I think this one takes four. Maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not going to be showing this whole thing, obviously. Don't think they'll need it. Yeah, it takes four. So once it gets four, we'll hit the Veil of Mist. And then, with our uh, super powerful reflector, we can just take out all these in practically one hit. This is the most powerful reflector, which means it has the most, the most attack power, so uh, we can be able to take out these guys without much problem. Except when you use all of your ink. But that's okay, because you can use an Infinity Stone to get that right back up where you need to be, and we'll see if we can take this guy out in one cycle. It'd be really cool if we could. Yeah, do one long slash to get him all at once. We're running out of time, I think. Come on, why am I not hitting these things that are right in front of me? Why are you missing, Amy? Come on! Alright, one left. I think we can make this. I think we got it. Alright! 
Oh, I don't think I've ever one cycled a spider demon before. Oh, hey, that still worked out pretty well in the end. Gives us a cool 20,000 extra yen, and I do believe that we get uh, a little something extra for it. A sun fragment. It'll come in handy later. We'll be picking those up uh, eventually. But for now, that just kind of frees up something for the next episode. We don't have to worry about it then, so take care of it now. Don't have to worry about it then. Deal? Deal. Alright. Alright, let's get back to the fishing. I'm pretty sure our friend has to be around by now. There he is. I don't know if I needed to wait an extra day or if I needed to just kill that boss first or something, but either way... Our friend is here, and he's ready to fish. So, <laughs> let's get to it. Sure, why not? Let's do this. North Ryushima is the second of the three permanent fishing spots. The mechanic works in the exact same way. Shocking, right? Nothing has really changed except for the fish that you catch. No extra challenges are added, nothing new is introduced, it's all just more fish to catch and more tedium to slog through in order to fill out that fish tome, you completionist nutcase you. Uh, me. Whatever. While North Ryoshima has its own set of exclusive fish, there are three fish that can be caught here and in the third spot. We'll talk about those once we actually get to the third spot, because right now, we have to catch a starfish, moray, loggerhead turtle, sunfish, nautilus, clownfish, blowfish, bonito, Red Snapper, Lobster, Striped Snapper, Manta, and Marlin. Not quite as numerous a list as Seans, namely because we're not making up for another fishing spot, but still extensive to say the least. And as they say in shitty Godzilla movies, that's a lot of waterborne creatures bound to undersea environments. Make sure to keep that list handy, because once you've collected all the fish, at least the ones that can only be found in Ryoshima, we can head to our next objective. <laughs> Thanks for the fun times, Mr. Fisherman Guy. Really enjoyed that mini game. Yeah. Well, one click, one quick look at the uh, fish tome here, and uh, we get a whole slew of new entries here. And all those blanks can be filled in at our last stop that we're going to be going to. But to do that, we're going to have to go back to shore. So uh, that's going to take a little bit. All right, we made our way back to shore, and now we're at a safe point. Ideally, one that we can warp with using the mist pot. So draw an X. There we go, and get the warp going. Blah blah blah. All right, next stop we're going is to Kamui. Not like Webkir or uh, Izofuji, just Kamui. There's one section of this uh, overworld that we haven't really explored yet. It's uh, that rightmost corridor, I guess you'd call it. That's where the dojo is, and that's where our third fishing spot is. I don't know if I've already revealed that, but it's been long enough that I think I should probably mention it again. Just taking a hard right, making our way through here. You can see these foxes you know, running track. I've already fed these foxes, I must have already been through here. The dojo's further that way, but our friend Kokari is here. Yes, our fishing friend from Agata Forest is now the permanent fishing spot in Kamui, so it all comes together in the end. That's nice. Of course, I don't know what kind of success he could have being an ice fisher in the frozen lake, but... You know, it's not supposed to be this cold. Maybe the fish haven't moved on yet. Maybe the water isn't that cold. I don't know. It could be anything. I'm not going to worry about it too much. The point is, he's here. We got a whole new bunch of fish to catch. Let's complete our tome and get that trophy and finally get things started with the rest of the season. Good. Yes, please. I would love nothing more than fishing. So let's get this over with. 
Boy, I'll bet you'll never guess what this minigame has in store for us. More fishing! Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, you'll doom him to suffer this repetitive and by all accounts, rather annoying minigame. I guess that's my punishment for putting this off to dedicate an entire episode to it, but... Whatever. Kamui's fishing spot. It's the same. No surprise. What is not the same is the kind of fish that you can catch. To finish off our tome, we'll need a scallop, seahorse, monkfish, octopus, nautilus, yellowtail, blowfish, flying fish, squid, supreme tuna, huh, oarfish, and another marlin. If you paid attention, you'd know that you can catch the nautilus, blowfish, and marlin at Ryoshima too. But if you didn't pay attention, well, you know now. Unless you still didn't pay attention, in which case rewind five seconds back or just Google it if you're that damn curious. This is what this went on a bit too long. Moving on! Once you get the last fish you need, which turned out to be a funny fish, I mean, seriously, how are these possibly over an hour fishing? Holy, why is that too much? Trophy will pop up. You don't need to have every fish in your inventory. You just need the entry in the tome, and that's no more fish in the sea. One of the most tedious trophies in the game, in the bag. And as they say in shitty Godzilla movies, that's a lot of groups of sentient organic mass of an ethological nature. We're not quite done yet, though. We still got one more thing left to do. Now that we've actually completed our fish tome, we've got quite a lot of fish on our hands. That, we're actually gonna go ahead and sell. So to do that, uh, it's best if we go to one specific place to actually make some money, because right now we got 700,852 yen. And, uh, to get the platinum, we need to get a lot more money than that. And, uh, we need to start preparing for the next episode, now that this one's starting to wind down. So, we're gonna take all of our fish to one special place. Head back to our save point here, and we'll warp. Let's see, the best place for us to go would be... That's too far. Let's get back. Ryoshima Coast. Yeah, that's good. Because the place we're heading to is Seon City. Because, uh, neat thing about Seon City and fish is that even though uh, the city is, you know, story-wise, being ransacked by the water dragon, who's dead? That means that all of the fishing prices, except for the ones in Kamui, I believe, are actually at an inflated price. So that's awesome. Well, let's go ahead and skip right up to Seon. So now we're here in Seon City. We're going to go and talk to our merchant friend over here. Over here, yes. Right here. It's business as usual. I still think we get a higher price on fish. I don't know if that's true, but uh, aside from fish, we also have treasures to sell. Not only uh, the treasures that we've already gotten, but uh, some of these really nice uh, Kamui treasures that are worth a lot more because they're towards the end of the game. Check it out. That's 2,000 yen right there. Or, sorry, that's 20,000 yen. That's even better. We sell one that that's, uh, gives our uh, coin purse a bit of a jump. So that's 60,000 yen we just got from that. It's not even talking about the fish that we're going to sell here. We'll sell all the fish that we got from Seon and Ryoshima and Kamui. That's just going to bring everything up. And you can sell fish at any merchant, but... Uh, I like to think that we still get a uh, inflated price here at Zayon, of course. And just looking that all go up, we've almost reached a million yen. Wait, I think, I think, no, I think we are act. yeah, we had just broke one million yen. And it keeps going. The ore fish is apparently the most expensive fish, being at 15,000. So now we've got 1,221,752 yen to play around with. Wow. We have to hit 2 million before we actually get the move that we need. So, next time on Let's Play Okami HD, we're going to be dealing with the Demon Gates. Oh, 
Lord Almighty. We got two demon gates to do, and uh, it's just gonna be an absolute nightmare. About as a nightmare as big as this one. But, it's one thing we have to do to get the platinum and get this done! So see you next time, let's play Okami HD! We are back, baby!